Hello and welcome back to our channel. Today, we're going to be talking about content storage for creators. Whether you're a photographer, a videographer, or a YouTuber, or any other type of digital creator, you probably have to deal with this problem where you create a lot of content or you create a lot of uh, videos or pictures and you now have to store them. So today I wanted to talk about a few solutions, um, a few things that worked well for us and they may work well for you, especially if you're in the same creative space. The few things that I wanna talk about is one, local storage, two, external storage, three, network storage, and the fourth one, which is kind of the newest, is cloud storage. So none of this content is sponsored. This is all just kind of my opinion and what we've worked with and what has worked well for us. There is a companion piece to this that will be posted on our website, benandkayla.com. So if you're interested, please let me know in the comments below if you wanna hear any more specifics on anything in particular, especially if you're interested in um, you know technical details or a deep dive, especially into some of the more later concepts. Uh, please comment down below and uh, we'll be sure to reply to those comments and we'll maybe even make a video series that kind of covers more in-depth topics. All right, so the first thing that I wanted to talk about is local storage. Now this is the kind of storage that comes with your device. It comes with your laptop or desktop or whatever you buy. It is the fastest read and write speeds that you're probably going to experience, especially if you have a solid state drive or an NVMe. It's always connected to your computer, so there's no mounting required. It's you know the standard folders that you're used to. So there is some cons to local storage. Basically that you can't upgrade it on most laptops, um, especially MacBooks and MacBook Pros. You're kind of stuck with whatever you got. Um, there is some ability to upgrade this on desktops, but there is some cons to doing that as well, because basically you have to reinstall your entire operating system and transfer all of that data over. And if you're not prepared to do that, it's a highly technical challenge and it's not something that I would recommend. Now, there is also a problem that there is no redundancy. So if you lose that laptop or you lose that drive or it becomes corrupted for some reason or another, there's no way to recover that data. So all of that hard work that you, you know, put into making those videos, taking those pictures, most of the time those are completely lost and it's very difficult to recover those. And it's also particularly difficult to move these files between computers and between desktops to share these videos with your friends or your editor, or even in a corporate workspace to have multiple people work on the same file. And this is where external storage comes in. This fixes that problem where you can't move files between computers because now you can basically take a little hard drive kind of like this. So external hard drives basically fix this problem where you can't move files between each computer. Basically take this little dongle here and plug it into any computer or desktop, and now you can move that data between any computer. You just keep it stored on here. So there's basically two types of external storage. This one is an external hard drive, but there's also external solid state drives. There's kind of pros and cons to both of these, but basically the quick overview is this is a spinning disk. It is very sensitive to drops and tumbles, um, and it will corrupt data and it will destroy data if you drop it while it's running. There's also an upside to that though, is this thing is a lot cheaper to produce and it's a lot cheaper for you to buy, but solid state drives are basically the superior thing and that's why they're in almost everything today. However, they are quite expensive to um, buy and use, but they are significantly faster and they have significantly better storage and significantly better reliability, especially if you're gonna be uh, moving around so if you're looking into um, you know, kind of an external storage solution that you can carry with you at school, throw in your backpack, or even take with you on uh, everyday work trips, I don't know if I'd recommend external hard drives. Um, although they are cheaper and you can get you know, really large storage spaces, it's probably not for you. So this is kind of where one of the problems comes in for us. We like external hard drives. We like external SSDs, um, we've kind of moved all of our workflow almost over exclusively to SSDs, just because a lot of the video content that, that we have is high bit rate, and that's something that you need a solid state drive for. However, like I mentioned earlier, those solid state drives are often pretty tiny, and that ends up, um, you know, you need a lot more storage to store things. So how do we fix this limitation with external hard drives? Well, with RAID arrays. Now, RAID arrays actually provide us the opportunity to to have multiple drives in a single unit. And it actually stripes some of your data over those drives and allows you to actually have this level of storage and redundancy in that storage so that even if a single drive fails, you can still recover your data. 
Now, this is most commonly used with hard drives, um, especially because there is some speed benefits to doing this um, striping of data across drives. But there is also some limitations that you should be aware of. And that's basically, this doesn't replace your backup solution or whatever you have. And there is an in increased cost because you basically have to buy four or five drives to fit into these RAID arrays to allow you to do that type of storage. However, with the most common type of RAID arrays that you'll find on the internet, they mostly use USB or Thunderbolt. And then you're kind of limited to the overhead that you have available with those type of ports. And it's only able to be connected to one machine. This is probably not something that you would want to lug around your house, um, connecting to your laptop or connecting to your desktop. So it's it kind of doesn't really help out when you're trying to transfer files between devices. All right, so how do we solve some of those problems with RAID arrays? Well, basically, this is where network attached storage comes in. Network attached storage basically has all of the same benefits that a RAID array provides, and it kind of adds a few neat and useful tools that will help you manage your data. One of the big things is it's uh, centrally located. So hopefully you can connect this to your network somewhere and then multiple users can use this across your network. So network and touch storage is only slightly more expensive than RAID arrays, especially with a lot of the advances in technology. Um, they're about the same price. The biggest cost with these is really based on the number of drives that you need and the sizes of drives that you need. And today, with everything really expanding in its quality and higher resolution and higher sensor size, a lot of that expense is going to basically boil down to you need to buy at least a minimum of two hard drives. And most of these come in basically a standard of four bays. There is some limitations with this, um, and, and that's basically the it, it's limited to network speeds. And so if you're used to USB drives, these little USB 3 things, they're good for about five gigabits a second. And they even have like updates to it that are good for about 10 and 20 gigabits a second today. And that's not really a problem for most hard drives, but it is a problem for solid state drives. That's why these things are most often filled with hard drives because you need storage and you need size. Now there is some solution to this, but it is particularly expensive. You can upgrade your network to a 10 gig gigabit network, and that's what a lot of corporate offices do, and that's what a lot of studios do. Um, but know that there's still quite a big investment in that today. There is some new intermediate Ethernet standards that are coming out um, that will kind of help improve this. But I can't recommend this if this is going to be your only device that you're going to have to store your content. I would still recommend keeping around these solid state drives or external hard drives and then kind of keeping this as uh, one of the duplicate copies that you keep at your uh, home location. All right, so a few quick recommendations. Like I said at the beginning of this video, none of this content is sponsored. Um, you can build your own NAS, um, and if you want more of that kind of content on our channel, please let me know. Please comment down below and, and kind of tell us that that's what you're looking for. Um, this is one of the, the NASs that I have built, and it's particularly useful for us. Um, there's basically two pieces of software that you can look up. There's one called Unraid and there's one called FreeNAS. Look at both of those. Um, great software. I lean more towards the FreeNAS side, but you can go with Unraid. There is a slight cost to that, but know that pretty much the hardware and the hard drive costs are going to be the big driving factors on this. Now, there is a few basically home gamer versions of these NASs. There's, you can go and look up uh, QNET and Synology. I have used both of those NASs in the past. Um, they're pretty reliable and pretty standard for what you need for most home use. So um, look up both of those and you can kind of go through there. A couple uh, words of wisdom with NASs. Um, definitely look at your data usage over time. Look at what you've used in the last month. Multiply that by about 12. That's what you're going to need in a year. Multiply that by two or three, which is about the lifespan of your NAS, and, and that's how much total storage that you're going to need. Keep an eye on that, um, especially because content sizes and video sizes are increasing. So if you're going to take all of your content in 4K, especially in 2022, and you're thinking about moving to 6K or 8K in the future, just remember that's going to have some pretty serious impact on your storage solution. So keep an eye out for that um, and make sure that you keep that in your calculations for when you're deciding how big of a NAS you need and, and how big of a hard drive you need. There's other calculators. I think I'll link those RAID array calculators in our companion piece that we're going to have on our website. And that should help you kind of get an idea of even if you buy four 10 terabyte drives, that, that does not mean that you have 40 terabytes on your RAID array. Some of that data has to be used for parity checking and redundancies. So 
you're going to lose some storage there. Basically think about 50%. So for four 10 terabyte drives, you're going to have about 20 terabytes of storage just to kind of put a damper on things. All right. So there's kind of one final option that I wanted to talk about, and that is cloud storage. Now, this is uh, kind of up and coming and it's a lot more modern, but this is really dependent on what kind of internet and network connection you have at home. If you've got fiber to the house, this might be an option for you, but just remember, you're probably not gonna be able to stream any of your videos off of cloud storage. But like I said, if you are a photographer, you might be able to get away with cloud storage, especially if there is some local storage component where it will down download stuff to your computer. Now there's a few options for this. Um, some of these are more technical than others. You can use things like Adobe, or you can use things like Google or iCloud, or even uh, there's a bunch of new ones out. You can even actually host some of those cloud storage solutions on your own NAS, but that's probably a little bit too technical for this video, but it was something that I wanted to bring up. All right, so there's a few pros and there's a few cons to cloud storage. One of the biggest things that I like to talk about with cloud storage is remember, it's basically just somebody else's computer that you're storing the data on. And now that takes out a lot of the management work that you have to do. They're also taking care of all the redundancy and basically most of the backups that you're doing. But just remember, if you're dependent on that one service provider, you know, to say if you were dependent on Google or you were dependent on iCloud and they had an outage or downtime and you really needed that footage, there's pretty much nothing you can do. Um, you just have to hope that, you know, they come back in a reasonable amount of time. And the same limitations if you uh, lose internet at your house or you're traveling on vacation and you go somewhere that doesn't have internet. Um, it makes it pretty hard to use your cloud storage if you don't have internet access. And other words of caution is cloud storage can be quite expensive. It does allow you to basically expand you know, the, at the rate that you're developing content and the rate that you're creating content and you only pay for the storage that you use. However, um, actually in, in some things you have to pay for storage up front, but in others you can pay for basically the storage that you're using, such as Backblaze. Now, the downside with that is that it can get quite expensive very quickly, especially if you're taking a lot of raw video or a lot of 8K video format. Long form stuff gets very expensive to store. So it's just something to keep an eye on the longer that you're doing content creation. I guess the question always comes, you know, how do we do it? Um, how do most content creators do it? And in discussing this with a few people, um, basically everybody has a kind of a hybrid approach. You know, kind of like I mentioned early on, we still use external hard drives. We do most of our editing off of external hard drives. Well, they're more external SSDs. And that's because they're quick enough to keep up with Premiere Pro. They're quick enough to keep up with the video codecs and bit rates that we use. Um, so I'd recommend if you're just starting out, probably just start buying SSDs unless you know for a fact that you can get away with using the bit rates that hard drives can provide, go with SSDs. Now we also back up to our NAS. We keep a redundant copy locally on um, that so that even if Kayla is working on one video and we don't have a second drive or we don't have a, another place for me to get it, I can always pop over to the NAS and, and copy it down to my local machine. But one of the things that I, I like to bring up here is backups. Um, make sure that you don't just assume that this is backed up or this is backed up because you have two copies. Remember, if if both of these things are in your house and your house floods or there's a house fire or you have them plugged into the wall and uh, lightning strikes, you're gonna lose all of your data regardless. So that's why I always recommend uh, people back things up. And, and that's where the cloud comes in for us. We use a storage plan called on Backblaze and it works great. I can send stuff there and I don't have to pay for any of the usage unless I actually have to download the drives. There is a, a base rate for storage, but it works well for our use. Hopefully you found this useful. And uh, if you wouldn't mind, give a like and subscribe to our channel for more content like this. Also, please go on over to our Ben and Kayla website. Um, I'm gonna have a companion piece up that will have some of the links and some of the stuff that I didn't dive into in this video. And uh, like I mentioned earlier, if there is a concept that I kind of glossed over that you wanted me to go more in depth on, I'm absolutely willing to do it. So just leave a comment down below and uh, I'll make an extra video on that.